Thanks for joining us this morning as we explore the making of Easter, otherwise known as... It is Easter pagan holiday. Yes. Or not. <laughs> that is the question. And that's why we did this. We did a skit. We're going to be reviewing that skit. And the main reason is a lot of the accusations that are coming up saying, hey, Easter is just a pagan holiday. It really gets its traditions from that. And so our skit is jabbing and making fun of that. And uh, we'll see where it goes. Two days ago, your brother in Christ here debuted our Making of Easter skit on his channel. We're going to take a close look at the skit and talk about the seven fallacies it exposed. Now, please note, this skit is just a parody and only a parody. We do not believe the events portrayed in the skit are what actually happened. In fact, quite the opposite. The skit portrays what some conspiracy theories claimed did happen. That pagan tr religions and traditions influence Easter itself or its traditions. This skit is in no way intended to be a mockery of the church or church traditions or even of Emperor Constantine himself. We do intend this skit to mock the ideas that paganism influenced Easter because that did not happen. So, roll this video. And that's why I'm giving you this most solemn duty to transform the venerable Resurrection Day into a more inclusive and equitable affair. But my lord, if, if we were to take the, the holiday and, and infuse it with pagan rituals and give it, it would confuse the parishioners. They would have no idea what's going to happen. Enough! Am I not the Emperor of Rome? The East and the West? I have spoken. Make it so. But my lord, do, do you have an example, some suggestions for us to use? Can we possibly have a musical or, or maybe a parade? Welcome to the realm of ecclesiological intrigue, where the clergy finds itself enmeshed and wrapped in a complex web of tradition, politics, and the unyielding march of revisionist history. This anachronistic monastery exists at the edge of reality itself, a cynic shrine to a time that never was, the laws of which appear and exist only in the mind itself. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to a wondrous world of pure imagination. The next step, the skeptic zone. Fallacy number one, Emperor Constantine made Easter inclusive. Roman Emperor Constantine did not make Easter more diverse, inclusive, or equitable. And we have no record of introducing pagan concepts into the Christian celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, either directly or indirectly. Roman Emperor Constantine did, however, have an indirect influence on the date of Easter, but even this is tenuous at best. So what did he actually do in regards to this? Well, Constantine legalized uh, Christianity with the Edict of Milan in 313 AD. Note, he did not make Christianity the state religion. That was Emperor Theodosius I in 380 AD. Number two, Emperor Constantine convened the first Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, where ma many matters of Christian doctrine were and practice were discussed and standardized. And we cover that in the video here. Just to, It just so happens that one of the outcomes of the Council of Nicaea was the establishment of a uniform date celebrating Easter. Before this council, various Christian communities observed Easter on different dates, some in accordance with the Jewish Passover and others on different schedules. Constantine, as a ruler of the Roman Empire, sought to promote the unity within the Christian church, and the standardization of Easter was part of his effort. The Council of Nicaea decreed that Easter should be celebrated on Sunday following the first full moon after the spring equinox. Now, why did they do this? Why did they just do it like a moon type of thing? I think, was that just to confuse the rest of us? Oh, it's just, it was just to follow all the other pagan holidays around. <laughs> That's why. Obviously, oh, that was the case. Obviously. <clears throat> um, 
what other what other holidays do we have in Christianity that are by the way the word holiday is holy day it comes from that what other holidays do we have in Christianity that follow a lunar calendar well like you know Passover that's not Christian though no well that's Jewish right yeah so 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 why you know Christmas doesn't it's always on the 25th of December or if you're uh, Eastern Orthodox is in January. So why would Easter do this? It's got to be pagan, right? There is no other. Well, you mentioned Passover. Passover. I mean, the Jewish calendar was a lunar calendar. Right. It was both a mix of lunar yeah. and solar. So, yeah. Uh, and that is exactly why. Uh, Comptus, it was, th they use a formula known as Computus, which was designed to align Easter with uh, the timing of Passover, also while unifying the celebration across all Christian communities. That's what that's what they were to do. So why why was Easter aligned with Passover? I mean, what do they have to do with each other? What do you mean? Jesus died after Passover. It was they was taken. During Passover, he was the Passover lamb ah. in order to fulfill the prophecies written. Okay, so so Jesus was just as just as in, in the, if you're not familiar with the Jewish tradition of Passover, that is celebrating um, the sacrifice that Jewish people made uh, of a lamb that they kept with them for I think it was a week while they were captive slaves in Egypt. And this was the last plague, the, the, the slaying of the firstborn that was done that Moses, that God used through Moses to let his people go. Finally, after this last plague, Pharaoh said, enough, get out of here. I don't want to, I don't want you guys around anymore. Um, and this last plague was uh, the, the killing of the firstborn and how the Jews were able to not have their firstborn killed was by following God's directions, killing the lamb, putting the blood of the lamb on the, the the doorpost of their of their homes, and when the the angel of death passed passed over, he would he would pass by or pass over these houses that had the blood on them, and Jesus then is the Passover lamb. During during the Passover seder, the the dinner that they held, he held with his disciples. There were certain implements in that Passover dinner. There was wine. There was the fourth cup that was the cup for the Messiah that they don't drink today because they set that aside because in Jewish tradition, the Messiah had not come yet. He was the Messiah. He lifted that cup and he said, this is the blood of my covenant, which is given to you. So by his death, he's saying, this is my death. This I'm coming and my coming is his death. And this is what is going to free you from your captivity. Just as you were captives of slaves in, in Egypt, now you're going to be freed from your captivity of sin by my death on the cross. So there's the blood and there's the bread, which he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. That's part of what they did during the ceremony. Leaven, unleavened bread, stiff. You could snap it. You can break it. And that breaking was his body. He said, this is my body. It's going to be broken. Just like you snap this, it's broken in the same way. So Jesus is referring to the Passover dinner itself. That's on Thursday night, which we would celebrate tonight, right? Yeah. Uh, this is being Thursday. Uh, Monday, Thursday, his last supper was the Passover supper. So having Easter follow that was exactly what Christian tradition should have been doing. Because if you're following the actual days going, that's based on a lunar calendar. And that's why Easter moves around all the time. That's why we're surprised. Oh, it's Easter already. I'm surprised. If you looked up in the, at the, the night sky the last couple of nights, you would have seen uh, full moon uh, passed by. So, hey, here we go. So we are in that tradition. Um, Constantine did not mandate anything about Easter, not its traditions, not its influences, and definitely not its theology. The only thing he did concerning Easter was to tell the church to get their act together and settle on a date. So Constantine, fallacy number one, Constantine did not alter Easter or force any kind of other pagan religions or traditions onto it. None of that happened. So this video is wrong. I'm going to tell you right now. It was fake. It was false. 
So let's look at the, the second part of that first video. Now, we have different videos that are pieced together, and we'll explain here in a bit why we did the piecing together. But this is the second half of that first video. Oh, it's just you. Just me? Yeah, just you. What is this? You like it? I've been working on it all morning. It's called the 52 blessings we have on behalf of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, it's rather lovely, except it's supposed to be for children. They'll love the colors. It's a multimedia presentation. We're what? in the dark ages. So? No color. Everything's in black and white. Oh. But, well, it's still the best calligraphy I've done. Well, I would say, yeah, it's rather wonderful, except nothing says let's celebrate the Resurrection Day like trying to squint at fine calligraphy. Is this Jesus or is that a well-dressed shepherd? Do you have anything better? I'm glad you asked. So, Emperor Constantine, bless his heart, just gave us a task. We are to take pagan traditions and infuse them into the uh, Resurrection Day, to give it more life, to make it more inclusive, to make it more equitable and, and endearing to everybody around. You cannot take two contradictory beliefs and slam them together in a violent collision. And besides, isn't that stealing? Uh, yes, but they didn't copyright it. They don't have a trademark for it. So, donkey droppings on them, it's all ours now. So, Emperor Constantine said this, and I got an idea, okay? I did some research before I talked to you about this, and I'm telling you, Mithras is a great one to use. He has such traditions that are just like Jesus that we can just like suck it all into Resurrection Day and make part of it. It'll be like theirs, but only better. Listen to this. He was a traveling teacher who performed miracles. What does that have to do with the Resurrection? There's more. There is more. He sacrificed himself for world peace. And he was buried in a tomb and resurrected three days later. If you ask me, I think we've got a winner here. This is a Persian deity? Yes, but... Uh, being so Persian you want to pull some old Persian deity out of the grave but and... Is right. Oh! <laughs> Mother Inferior Mary Sue, it's so good to see you. Yes. But he's not right. I'm telling you, this is. You don't have anything better. This is. I do. Mean, Aestara! Who? Aestara, the Germanic god associated with spring and fertility. Ah, somebody's getting in touch with nature right now, I see. So, what does she have for this that we could. She's got cute, sparkly, colorful eggs. Eggs? Ah, colorful. colorful. Wait. Are you two working together here? This is the Dark Ages. We get no Technicolor until the Renaissance. It doesn't work. Mm, you can still see the spark. Besides, bunnies? Cute little bunnies? Not in the sanctuary, we, we don't. They leave little droppings, little messes. And besides, have you ever seen the little bunnies clump together? Does he even want to grow? Like, That's a good question. Uh, yes, we want to grow. We want to expand. That's what Emperor Constantine wanted, and he's got his sword, by the way, and we have to listen to what he said. But! No one's going to back you on this. Brother, Brother Thaddeus, Thaddeus will. will. <laughs> and so what? Do you have anyone else more respected than Brother Thaddeus? Everyone likes him. Okay, okay. Everybody does love him tremendously, loves him. However, I'm going to go talk to Brother Inspirationist Philosophus. Mm. He loves Mithra. I don't even hear him talking about it. He talks about him all the time. And then he's doing a lecture right now. I can go. I can go talk to him about. And then, okay, by by vespers this evening, I'm going to have proved that Mithraic tradition is like a thousand times better than your bunny loving, egg tossing little goddess here with the little droppings all around. No, I'm going to prove it to you absolutely positively. You can talk to Thaddeus all you want. I'm talking to I. As the clergy go on their quest for enlightenment, you, dear viewer, can make 
history. After all, this isn't reality. If the skeptics can make their own version of the Easter origin story, why not you? So what made up myth should we combine with Easter now? Should we mix Mithras with Christ? Or instead, should we combine Oyster, Ostra, Ostera, Yoster, Yahoo with Christ? The choice is yours in the Twilight Zone. I'm waiting. I can see you, you know. Oh look, it's the end. <laughs> you had a lot of fun with that one. So we're there's a lot of different fallacies that are in here, but we're only going to look at one because we'll deal with the fallacies concerning Mithras and Oestra, Stara, however you pronounce his name, her name. By the way, there's like 20 different ways. We could not find a way to actually pronounce her name. And we'll see where that origin was. And if you're an Anglo Saxon uh, enthusiast, maybe you can tell us how to actually pronounce her name correctly. But what I would like to deal with is fallacy number two, and this is sort of a tongue in cheek, and it's not specifically related to Easter, but it was fun fallacy in the skit. And so we'll take it for what it's worth. The Dark Ages were in black and white. In some ways, the Middle Ages were a time of decline characterized by political fragmentation, economic instability, cultural stagnation, and limited intellectual developments and artistic achievements when compared to the Greco-Roman Empire or Greco-Roman period. But this can be an oversimplification. Despite the challenges of constant invasions during the time, climatic changes, plagues, this period also saw the emergence of new political structures, the preservation of classical knowledge by monastic communities, and the beginning of feudalism and the foundations of middle, uh, medieval culture. There is so much material in this topic alone that it really calls for a video of its own. But as for the fallacies concerning the Persian god Mithra, the Germanic god Oyestra, we'll cover that in the next couple of videos. Now, there was a certain way that we did this and breaking up this up into videos, and you didn't see it in the end of this last one, but there, if you watch uh, your Brother in Christ video here that he released, you'll see hyperlinks over to the side when he says you can go this way or you can go this way. You want to talk about that? Yeah, it was basically a choose your own adventure style with hyperlinks. I don't think it's gone over very well, though. So I might have to release the entire video altogether and just have like a black screen meanwhile and then jump back in time. Jump back in time. Okay, so the idea was that you would get to the end of this video and then you would choose which way you would go. You would either go with uh, Bishop Pompus and go talk to IP, or you would go with Bishop Ignoramus and Sister Mary Sue and go see uh, Brother Thaddeus. So you could choose either way that you go and then you can come back to the original and then cycle back through. But it appears that maybe that's not the case. Well, people are not. Yeah, so I see like looking at the stats of the video itself, I see like over 500 people have watched the original part one. That we just watched. That we just watched. Uh, like 24 people watched part. Part two. So people tend two. to drop yeah. off and not realize that that's, that's there. Yeah. That so we got like less than 10% of people actually realized what was going on. It was more on. like 5%. Yeah. 5% of people. Yeah. That's not a good thing. No. <laughs> that is totally missed it. Definitely when we had um, so many puns in there too. Enjoy. Yeah, I'm going to put up, uh, I'm checking the comments here. I'm going to put one up by Thomas Hall. He said that um, bless his heart would probably have been the death sentence. <laughs> bless his heart would have been the death sentence. Yeah, the comments about, uh, I don't know. I don't know how 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 totalitarian um, Constantine was. We nope. let something like that go or not. I don't know. But then uh sad thing is I know several Christians have fallen to, fall for the YouTube lies about Easter and Christmas. Yeah, it could be kind of convincing if you were to, to listen to that and then not check. 
what you always got to have to do on all this is check the primary sources. There yeah. is plenty of literature, primary, I mean the original literature that was out there. We know what was discussed in the Council of Nicaea. We can go through and we can actually check it, check it out. So you can make the conclusions for yourself, but it's so easy just to, to scroll by, hit these videos, you know, do, do some doom scrolling. And then all of a sudden you're thinking about, well, that must have been true because they, they put it on, they put it on video. It may sound good. Yeah. So uh, it followed up, said, choose a great idea, maybe too nuanced for people to have picked it up. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to probably Saturday re-release the entire video all together and just have it off to cut out a lot of Rod Sterling sort of yeah and unfortunately and that, he had some really good he, lines we just let him do whatever he, he had lived some really yeah. good lines there unfortunately to, to put it in one video like that they're gonna have to be cut right they're gonna have to be cut maybe a blooper reel at the end yeah like he's staring at you and say i see you and he had some other ones that were like yeah maybe a blooper reel that would be awesome just with him that would himself be funny. and maybe some shorts or something like that but that was unfortunately that was something that had come through even one of the actors um in the, i'm not gonna say who but one of the actors in here just saw the first video and thought that was it. Didn't realize that there were other ones out The links and everything. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was, uh, I'm, I, wanted to, I wanted to see the entire thing because that was a lot of work. Yeah, it was a lot of work that went into this. And a lot of people, we had twice as many people work on this kit as we did on the previous one. So I'd like to see it be successful. Uh, Ishtar sounds like Easter. Now, that was another one that we could have gone on. Uh, we were considering doing Ishtar as well. That was another uh, pagan goddess that is looked at as being, oh, that's the origin of Easter. <laughs> and as we dig into Ostara, as well, however you pronounce her name, uh, we'll find out that what the primary source was for that, and then the amount of extrapolation that you need to try to make her fit into, say, well, see, all the traditions that are from Easter are really this pagan religion here, this Germanic goddess. And the and same thing with with uh um ishtar. ishtar the same thing with ishtar because there's a lot of and i looked into it it goes back to the two babylons book that was written in the 1800s yeah and it's like that's their main source that made these claims so I'm like okay, this is a little little removed yeah and it's and so much has been in discovered and, and so forth since the mid 1800s that it really does make that dated material and um he followed up to say uh way too many in interactive fallacy no way interactive fallacy simulator <laughs> yeah it, it would have worked it would have worked out so much better had that been the case so let's take a look at the the second so so basically what that what happens is you have these two groups that split off one goes one direction, one goes the other, and you have two follow-up videos that follow these two. So we're going to take a look at the second follow-up, the one that that follows uh, Brother Pompous, which I might just use that as my name from now on. Because Brother I'm, Pompous. Yes, Pompous. I'm rather rather uh, arrogant, so we'll go for that. Look at Mithra. Mithra was a Persian deity. They'll say he was born of a virgin on December 25th and visited by shepherds. They love December 25th. He was a traveling teacher, had 12 disciples, sacrificed himself for world peace, was buried in a tomb and resurrected for three days. Later, on Easter morning, followed his promised immortality, called Good Shepherd, Savior, Redeemer. His holy day was Sunday, and his followers partook in the Lord's Supper every week. Well, let's look at some of these. Was he born on December 25th? Oh my goodness, Encyclopedia Britannica says he was. It was the birthday of the Indo-European deity Mithra. Checkmate, Christians. Gotcha there. Okay, not everything in Encyclopedia Britannica is right. Here's an actual Mithraic scholar, Roger, Roger Beck. He says, in truth, the only evidence for the celebration of the birthday of Invictus on that date is calendar of Philocalus. Invictus is, of course, Sol Invictus, Aurelian sun god. It does not follow that a different, earlier, and unofficial sun god, Sol Invictus, Mithras, was necessarily or even probably born on that day too. So, there is no evidence Mithra was born on December 25th. Encyclopedia Britannica is wrong. So sometimes you may even get a source and the source is just wrong. Ask them for primary sources from the ancient world. 
Did Mithra have 12 disciples? This is the image they'll use. This is a depiction of Mithra surrounded by the 12 zodiac, not a picture of his disciples. Besides, Gemini should be two disciples, so she should have 13. This is an image of Zodiac. In the Persian-Iranian version, he's got one companion. And in the Roman version of Mithra, he's got two. There's no evidence he had 12 disciples. You go through all this, can't find anything. Was he born of a virgin? No, it says he was born out of a rock. How many of you think you were a rock before? You... Hey, what if, what if the rock's a virgin? Quiet. <laughs> we call that a category error. Uh, all this is false. Now, his holy day was Sunday, but Michelle Salzman says, notes that the Mithraic use of Sunday postdates the New Testament. So the Christians could not have stole that from the Mithraic cult. So you can show there were correlations, show Sunday worship, perform miracles, but our hasty generalizations and the correlations don't predate Christianity, so it doesn't work here either. What about Buddha? They'll say Buddha was born on December 25th to the Virgin Maya. Birth was attended by wise men. The angels were singing. It's perhaps the rule of the world. What an excellent presentation. As Bishop Bumpus goes back in defeat, feel free to follow him by clicking here. However, if you'd like to go back in time and see Brother Ignoramus and Mother Mary Sue in their pursuit and on their quest, click right here. You come here often? No, I don't. I'm being held against my will. Call for help. So, video number two, fallacy three, Jesus was basically Mithra. And as you can see, Michael Jones there, AKA IP, went through and pretty much pulled that all apart. Uh, did Christians borrow from Mithraic traditions to make them their own? Well, let's just take a quick review of what he had in his video. True or false? Mith Mithra was born at, of a virgin on December 25th and visited by angels. True or false? False. False. Mithra was a traveling teacher and performed miracles. False. He had 12 disciples and promised immortality. False. False. He sacrificed himself for world peace. False. False. He was buried in a tomb and re resurrected three days later on Easter morning. False. False. He was called the Good Shepherd, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Way, the Truth, and the Life. False. His followers partook in the, partook in the Lord's Supper. False. False. The only thing that is true is his holy day was Sunday. And that was after the Christian tradition of meeting on Sunday for their weekly service. Mithraic tradition, uh, it was a mystery religion within Rome after it was a Persian religion uh, centuries before. And then they started a tradition of meeting on Sunday after the Christians did. So, and there's no way that Mithra influenced Christianity whatsoever. Uh, yeah, that was, that was totally false. Um, so when we were also, when we were doing this, um, originally we had planned to talk to Michael Jones about this and then he'd used, we were actually at the conference. This is, this video was taken from the conference itself down in Florida that we were at a couple of weeks ago. And that link is right here. You can look at the summary of that event and it was really good with all the, oh, yeah. all the speakers a lot of fun. that were there. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to put up uh, a comment here from uh, Chris, Chris, Christ Opportunidad, he said, this is what happens when your primary source yeah. is Quora and Reddit. Yeah, you can trust that 100%. And, and even better than those two is, is put Wikipedia up there because, uh, yeah, this was this was no. IP has had to deal with TikTok conspiracy and insanity for far too long. Bro needs all the help he can get. Yeah, I, I agree. He's, he's dealing with a lot. Man, he's just pumping them out left and right. So Always got it scheduled out. Yeah. Are you kidding? That guy's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I wish I was that organized. So sometimes. you say scheduled out. How do you know that it's actually scheduled out? 
I have my sources. You have your sources. Okay. I have and my I, sources that he's I, got like he's got like things planned out months and months in advance. That guy's organized. He, he is, is nailing he it. Is. If you check out his website too, it's 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 pretty slick. So he has his act together with that. I don't agree with him on everything. And I and there was actually one uh, event here that um I almost wanted to raise my hand during the presentation and say, I'm not too sure about that. And then quote another source that would, that would not uh, conflict with what he said, but we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And these are not, some of these are not essentials. So in non-essentials unit, in essentials, unity and non-essentials, liberty and all things charity. And we can uh, agree to disagree on some of the minor issues around that. So I would disagree with him for that. Next video. This is what happens when Brother a Brother Pompous is taught is going to see uh, inspirationist philosophers. While that's happening, Brother Ignoramus and Mary Sue are checking out Brother Thaddeus to get information on the goddess who shall not be named. Brother Thaddeus, we need your help. We know your work that you've done, how much research you've really dove into this stuff all your life sermons on you book. Mm -hmm. We really respect what you have done and the work you've put forth, but we kind of need your help with something. Yeah. So. Well, you're off to a good start. Compliments are always appreciated. Well, so since you're so wise and uh, so knowledgeable, we need your help because we have this command that we need to start incorporating more things into the resurrection celebration. You know, no one may be against that, but then I realized like we do need to attract the kids. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, hey, star is perfect. Go on. Yeah, so she's got colorful, sparkly she? eggs. Yeah, she's got bunnies. Why are you saying she? A star is the name of a moth. A star is a dramatic goddess, right? No, it's just the name of a month in the German calendar. Now, some of the months are named after gods or goddesses. So maybe in a few hundred years, when people have forgotten, they'll look back and make a bad conclusion that there's an A star, but I've never heard of this deity. I don't think it exists. But, but what about bunnies and eggs? No, no, I, I haven't seen any bunny celebrations. I mean, they are soft and fluffy. I, I think kids would like them, but it's definitely not a pagan custom. Now, eggs, Christians have used the egg as a symbol of rebirth, and Sometimes we choose to give things up during the Lenten season to prepare for Easter, including eggs. So that could work. But if you're trying to attract pagans, this still won't mean anything to them. Constantine is going to be happy. And, oh, Brother Pompous is never going to let this down. I'm always going to hear about it every day. Are you certain? Yeah, as near as I can tell, this deity doesn't exist. Maybe, you know, like 10 people made up the deity. I mean, after all, all false deities are not real, so someone could have made it up. But as far as I know, it's not a major goddess by any means. Yep. Trust the deal. Sorry, I can only give you the facts. Well, these facts don't care about my feelings. Fine. As Mary Sue and Ignoramus go back in defeat, feel free to follow them here. However, if you'd like to go back in time and see what Pompous was up to, feel free to follow the link here. Now, a word from our sponsor. Lucius Candy Canes has menthol free and menthol full versions of their candy canes which I recommend to anyone who wants it. It is a very good paying sponsor. Completely unrelated, if you or a loved one has a severe addiction to candy canes, I recommend calling the Candy Attic National Emergency Services, Canes for short. Now, I don't know anyone personally that has any issue with candy canes, and of course, I could step whenever I want to. However, if I needed help, I would go to Canes for help. So this one was good because we had a lot of different fallacies that were brought up in this, even more so than the Mithraeus video. Fallacy number four, Easter is basically Yolster, Istara. 
uh, whatever her name is, is basically her celebration. The goddess Yoster, Ostara, Estra, was a dramatic goddess associated with spring and fertility. Some scholars suggest the name Easter may have originated from Yoster, and the celebration of Easter may have incorporated elements of her fest festival. Now, that was the fallacy. The truth is, the historical evidence for the existence of Yester is limited, extremely limited. All to one person. And the extent of her influence on Easter traditions is dubious at best. The old English deity Yester is attested to solely by the Honorable Bede, in his, uh, the 8th century uh, monk, in his work called The Reckoning of Time, where Bede states that during Yoster month, the equivalence of April, pagan Anglo-Saxons had feasts held in Yester's honor, but that tradition had died out by his time and replaced by the Christian Paschal month, a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. Yoster month had the name which is now translated Paschal month, and which is called after the. This is actual. This is the actual translation from him. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oh, I can't do that. Too bad. Yoster, this, so this is a translation from B. This is in his work uh, that he published in the 8th century. He said, Yoster month is a name which is now translated Paschal month and which was once called after a goddess of theirs named Yoster, which in, in whose honor feasts were celebrated that month. Now they designate that Paschal season by her name, calling the joys of the new rites of the time-honored name and the old observance, the reckoning of time. No other reference to this goddess were established or discovered until 1958, where over 150 inscriptions were found dating to the second and third century, referring to not her, not her, but the Montre. Austria Hene, a triad of goddesses. So that one quote that I just read from Bede was the only thing that connects her, the, the German goddess, to Easter. And it's only because the name of the month, and he might be guessing. Yeah, he might be assuming since the name of the month, and there are other months that are named after gods as well. Okay, well, there might be connections. Something we don't see, though, is we really don't see any shrines to this goddess directly. We don't see um, something a lot of pagans did was name things after yeah. a lot of names like Thor's hammer or, you know, of people. So sons and daughters would be named after, you know, the right hand of Thor or something along those lines. And that wasn't, we don't see that historically. We don't see that happening. Um, we also don't see, you know, like Thursday, okay, Thursday. You had Frey, so that Friday was Frey's day. So you have certain ones that have led into our English traditions. We don't see any of that with this goddess at all. In fact, he's the only one that really references. And even in his reference itself, it doesn't say that, you know, they took it and made it into Easter. Mm -hmm. They're saying, hey, it's the same month, you know. And the, it, he specifically acts like there's multiple celebrations, in fact, that they used to have about this goddess in this time period. And... To my knowledge, Easter is only one holiday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot has just built up a lot of myth um, in, in, the, in the bad term of myth, not the C.S. Lewis term of myth, uh, has been developed with that. So I have here uh, what the actual quote was. Now, if you can read um, Anglo-Saxon, uh, or I'm sorry, this is Latin. This was his writing in his journal. So if I were to translate this, into English, this is the quote that he is making for this. Uh, it was not, and we're going to talk about the date of Easter here in a little bit and where that where that actually came from, because we already talked about it concerning the Council of Nicaea, where the date was placed in there. And then we're going to say, well, what about the month, this this name, Yoster, Yoster month? Um, 
that he was saying that that is now being called the Paschal month, which we call April. Now it falls in 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 at the end of March because it's based on the lunar calendar. But that's basically it. This is this is his writing. This this quote right here in Latin was the source for Yoster being the the goddess of Easter. That's it. Nothing. Hey, no other traditions. Talk about taking a pair. Just a paragraph making a whole it is it is whole argument based off of one single paragraph from one single source right now like i said in 1958 there were some other discoveries about inscriptions but it doesn't really add a whole lot to it especially when you have a triad of goddesses and this is all fluctuates over time i think we tend to decide to kind of make too much out of it so that was definitely it uh fallacy number five Eggs are a sign of fertility of the goddess Yoster. No. Well, we can already see that there is no evidence that it came from this goddess. Uh, yeah, that tradition's just not there. It's, it's, we it's don't the, know the traditions. Did you see eggs in that quote? No. No. There's nothing there. So where did the idea of eggs and Easter come from? Well, we saw it partially mentioned in, in a video with Brother Thaddeus, by the way. And he was saying that maybe it has some, you know, could could have something to do with Lent. Now he was taking this as as if this was in the fourth century, this this time that we're filming. And we kind of really stretch it a little bit to say it's covering for more time than that because there's all sorts of anachronistic things that happen in the in this video. Well, for example, Bede wouldn't have written about this dramatic goddess anyway. No, because before this was, time. Yeah, right. because it, it was been after this time. time. There's and, a lot of things. And that's why... And they didn't he, have computers. Uh, or, you know, Wikipedia or... Yeah. Encyclopedia. Uh, yeah, yeah. And if you notice that uh, Brother Inspirationist Philosophers had an Apple PC there, so that was... Or Apple laptop, so... See, it is the true personal computer. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, so where does this idea... And Brother Thaddeus did mention this in here, that... More than likely, the idea of eggs came from it. It's a teaching can be as a teaching implement for for talking about the Trinity, but it was also during Lent, the forty days before Easter. There is a a way to show um, focus on the event to give up uh, a, a certain thing in your diet or to fast in some way, and eventually that developed into no meat during Lent which many Christians still celebrate. And taking meat or animal products out of the diet, they also, for a long time, included eggs. No eggs during Lent. Well, I raise, I help raise chickens. My wife actually does it. And during, you, you can store eggs, but they can go bad after a while. And one way to store eggs for longevity is to boil them ahead of time, and they last a lot longer as a boiled egg as opposed to a raw egg. If you then boil eggs during Lent, the 40 days going up to it, you can use that food. Instead of just tossing the eggs, you can then use it afterwards. Well, the kids would be pretty excited about actually eating some, some meat product. They're not spoiled kids like we have today that are like, put some candy in it. And there's no candy. When I was growing up, we just had the eggs, not with the candy. And we just actually had real boiled hard eggs. And that would be colored. And we'd spend all this time coloring the eggs, make it fun. And that became a part of the festival over time. So no, fallacy five, eggs are not a sign of the fertility goddess, Yester. And who said she was a fertility goddess? There's no evidence. Where is that in bead? It had something to do with maybe that time of year, uh, springtime. Maybe there's some fertility in there. But that's really reading into the history. that we have no We have no hard evidence for that whatsoever. Fallacy six, European hair is a sign of fertility of the goddess Yoster. Following the same line, no. Same line of the logic. Again, is that in the text at all? No. Is that in any of the other things that we found about the three goddesses, as far as I know? No. no. Rabbits pop out of their holes in the spring, just as Jesus came out of the tomb after his resurrection. Possibly there. No, no, but there is no absolutely no evidence that it's pointing towards this Germanic goddess. And even Easter was celebrated long before the hair was even added. Correct. So it wasn't like they 
started and had the entire thing like, okay, here's a package deal. Here you go. It's like, no, that was just, that was added on later on and much, much later. Fallacy number seven. The name Easter comes from the goddess Yoster. Now, we've already talked about this a bit, but it's worthwhile to, to, to mention again real quickly. Yoster month, monath, sorry, Yoster monath was the Anglo-Saxon name for the month of April. This is an established fact. We know this to be true. It may refer to the 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 goddess, or it may she have been may have been named after the month. So in the Anglo-Saxon calendar, beat that beat is referring to, and you mentioned this a little bit earlier. We're talking about the days of the week. Only three months in the Anglo-Saxon calendar out of twelve may, and it's not clear that they do, but they may refer to pagan gods all the other months refer to seasonal periods like rain or harvest or refer to a calendar event like midsummer or dawn beginning of a year uh the first the first month in the anglo-saxon calendar was after yule it was and yule would would have been the name for for christmas time so it would have been after after that. So that's the first month. So yeah. In contrast, our modern English calendar has more months referring to Roman gods or Roman religions than the Anglo-Saxon calendar did. Yeah. Such such as uh January, February, March, May, and June all refer to either Roman gods or Roman religious events. And take a quick look at the, the comments. Uh, here we go. Breathing has pagan origins. All pagans breathe. Draw your own conclusions. Absolutely. That is so true, brother. You are better than inspirationist philosophers. You are bringing us truth. In one of, speaking of, speaking of him, in one of his uh, videos, and we do cover that in our, in our uh, review of the Apologeticon in Florida, one of his presentations, he goes through and shows that even though there are similarities with some of these gods and, and Christianity, although there are very few similarities that very are there, few. it's like saying, if you look at the pyramids in Egypt, the pyramids in uh, Mesoamerica, like the Aztecs and the Mayans, and the pyramids in maybe other, other locations in, in Asia, to say, oh, they're all connected. They all worship the same deity. They all, they all knew each other. They spoke to each other. They must have. They all made pyramids. Or maybe pyramids are just the best way to pile up a bunch of rocks without them falling off on top of each other. So yes, that is, and it, it's, it's a great example that you can't make that conclusion that is there. Well, like even going back to the July thing being named after Roman God or Roman celebration, um <clears throat> not july june 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 would have been juno june? that jupiter so yes okay june. july was was julius caesar julius sorry caesar. don't okay. mean to correct you please. no that's fine so julius caesar it's like someone going back you know two thousand years in the future looking back at american culture saying the fourth of july was a celebration of julius caesar it was inspired by that and they took it from there and that's how these Christians corrupted Julius Caesar's day because that must have been a holiday they celebrated beforehand. Obviously. So the 4th of July is celebrating Julius Caesar because yes. we're all Roman at heart. That's the level of <laughs> intelligence used in this argument. So so just because it happened, there's some correlation does not mean causation in this case. It did not... It is not directly affected by Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar nope. did not create the 4th of July, although nope. he did write the Star Spangled Banner. So we do have here uh, a comment from the Thomas Thomas Hall. He said, give David S. a raise or at least a card. Well, a definitely a raise. This man has a gift for impromptu. There was a lot. A lot of the phrases a that he lot. said after, after were all. And all we of them were impromptu, except for like point to this side here. 
because we're going to have a video here. Point to this side here. We're going to have a link here. That's how the guy is saying. It's like he goes off on this. <laughs> goes off on this. I'm like, oh, this is great. Like the Lucius Candy Canes? That was all him. That was not. Now, we did have a script. But then it was just sort of like, well, ad lib after this point because there's going to be delay. The, the hardest thing with the video, with doing all this recording, with him doing the improv. Yeah. After the fact is not laughing and getting it on the film. I did that once. Because yes. <laughs> it was really hard because some of the, he didn't let us know what he was going to say. No, and there and, was a lot of takes that we had taken for this, and some of them didn't actually show up on here. No. There are some other ones that are just as good, too. So he's definitely a keeper. And as for a card, brother, I don't know what you're talking about there. So I think I do, but I'm not going to say it. So, well, they, But he is definitely a talent worth keeping. Well, that's one of the main characters, then. <laughs> so we'll look at this last video, and this kind of wraps everything together, and then we'll review uh, any other fallacies after this. Brother Ignoramius, Sister Mary Sue, before we get started, I've got a confession to make. Mithras didn't work. He was a total failure. Didn't line up on anything with the resurrection of Christ. I'm so sorry, I have to confess, he, you could say he never rose to the occasion. <laughs> rose to the, never <laughs> rose to the, <laughs> thank you, my emperor. He is going to be mad. Why? That wasn't that bad of a joke. Yeah, <laughs> you aren't going to like this. Turns out A.F. Star doesn't work either. What? Yeah, even for a false deity, she never even existed then. Oh, I told you this was a harebrained idea. Well, I, we, we could still use uh, chocolate eggs, right? Yeah, that sounds good. We still have, yeah, yeah, someplace out in the east. I think I've got something better, though. Really? Yes. I'm going to go tell Emperor Constantine. It's a new tradition. We can do pin the tails on the bishops every year. Emperor Constantine. Whoa, whoa, wait. Oh, no, no. Hey, that's a bad habit. No, wait, no. Truth, in its most simple form, is powerful. Any accessory, any embellishment, any addition detracts from the message. The ultimate message of Easter is that Christ brings life to the dead and shines light on the chains of darkness. If you'd like to learn how to refute misconceptions about Easter more, I recommend the link above. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, in the skeptic zone. Now we're not done. <laughs> you can see rolling the credits. We're not done yet. Uh, the fallacies will never end. We covered seven fallacies here in the skit and followed up with the video here and talking about those. The fallacies never seem to end. Oh, um, no. There's for, more in the comment section of the video itself. Yeah. That skit video. There's more. Like what? They what just was, keep what they going. Say? Oh, that eggs are Easter. And it goes with uh, the one of the pagan goddesses and it was that they would sacrifice children young oh. babies and they would drip the the eggs in their blood and it's like what no not even what not garbage? even close no not even close yeah um so we could cover all these fallacies in their skit but then that we would be like hours and hours on that a long skit yeah <laughs> And, a long and it would have been boring. No one would have watched it. It would have been way over the top boring. But Michael Jones does a pretty good job on covering these. And there's other other uh, uh, YouTubers as well. As there's plenty of material on the inter internet that does. Unfortunately, these. there's a lot more that are pushing these ideas out there. Yeah, it seems like they're they're popping up even more. I mean, more. if you just type in um, "pagan Easter" in like an incognito window, yeah, you get nothing but them preaching in fact it's like a it looks like a history channel documentary stating it is 
wow. right off the bat. And that's got, I think, millions of views on it. Yeah. See, I can, be I can believe no. that. Yeah. So we need to, that's why we're doing this. Uh, please like and share this video because this will help combat a lot of the fallacies that are out there. Not all of them, but some of the top ones that are out there, definitely. And, uh, and also uh, Michael Jones' video, which I'm going to put a link here in the top, not just his video, I'm talking his channel, uh, IP. And then he, co he combats a lot of this too. Now I will be, again, I'll be releasing all of these skits as one chunk, probably Saturday and the day before Easter, just because I don't think a lot of people realize that the hyperlinking thing was working. Right, right. It was, you're supposed to be able to get to it. And the only way to get to those additional videos was through the hyperlink itself. They were unlisted videos otherwise. Oh, yeah. So you have yeah. to watch the first one in order to get to the second, third, and fourth And one. then continue down. That's what, that was the idea. And it's kind of fun. I think it would have been a fun idea. You're basically creating your own story with yes. this because you're jumping between the different hyperlinks. Well, this was a trial for a much, much, much larger project I wanted to do. And I think I'm going to have to deep six the larger project. Yeah, that was for because Christmas, that was right? going. Yeah, it was going to be... For Christmas, and I was looking at like thirty-two videos. Possibly. Wow! Wow! That's a full this. production. Always oh, going to be full production. I was going to have to start like now on it. Yeah. And if this is the sort of response, this idea we get, yeah, it's just not going to work. Doesn't really catch on. Well, you try these experiments, see if they work and that they don't. And I'm going to put this up here too. Hutchie says yes. that uh, Breakfast Gun is the unsung zero, hero of the series. The music is spot on 100%. Now, when we first tried this, um, we got a... I used the original music as part of the parody. They didn't like that too no. much. They copyrighted it. It was not a copyright strike, but it was a copyright claim on it saying, hey, you can't monetize and we're not going to show this to everyone. Yeah. So that one definitely killed the first version. So I had to release a second with the music actually correct. And I couldn't tell the difference. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know why this, there was, I guess there were some slight differences, but enough that it really didn't, didn't trigger the in kind of yep, copyright. It's method. a parody. So it works. And if you listen to them side by side yet, yeah, there's definitely huge differences between the two. Yeah, I wouldn't know. But it's definitely a parody of the song. Right. And so we have coming up, uh, next next week, we're going to be reviewing the new movie that's coming out, Godzilla x Com. This is, um, it's coming out, I believe, tonight. But we, instead of doing a review right away, we wanted to push it off after Holy Week because we're focusing on the death and resurrection of Christ. After that, we're going to be doing the review on this movie. This should be coming up. Um, on Monday, I believe, Monday evening, if the schedule Monday works evening, out, yep. uh, out well. And uh, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to see a review or if you have seen the movie, whatever, we're going to go fresh from the theater. We're going to take a look at that. And we're going to give you the Christian perspective on this video. Yes, yes. And we have done a buildup for this. We did do Godzilla Minus One before. We did a review on that. We did a review on the whole MonsterVerse series, which is right here. And all building up to this and looking forward to seeing this. Uh, my my wife, especially, she loves this type of stuff. <laughs> and we'll see where we go. So uh, until then, we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, enjoy whatever beverage of choice that you have. And we will see you next time. <laughs>